As we are here with Mercer head coach Drew Connick. The first question, coach, you guys were a young team last year, have a lot of guys coming back. What were some of the biggest challenges for the coaching staff, getting some of those young guys ready to, ready to contribute right away? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, we always, our philosophy is if they're ready to go, play them. You know, and, and when you come in, and I'm going into year three now, it seems like sometimes year 10 just because of the, the unusual circumstances we had with the pandemic and all. But uh, um, you're going to have some turnover when you have a new coach come in. And then we want to, but we want to out recruit. You know, we want to out recruit what we've already got. And that's what you want to do every year. And so I felt like we were able to hit on some younger guys uh, who were really great kids, really smart kids who were ready to play a little bit earlier. Um, you know, we got several guys back. We do, and uh, uh, those kids are doing a good job. I mean, they're really doing a good job. I'm really excited about it. I have fun going to work every day just because their attitude is just really positive. They've worked hard in the weight room. Um, you know, so there'll be a lot of familiar faces that you'll see out there, but there'll also be, you know, one or two new guys that'll pop up on there as well. So throughout spring practice, summer workouts, you've seen this team grow and mature. Mm -hmm. well, what's different about this year's Mercer team compared to some previous seasons? Well, honestly, we just had our, our first spring practice since I have been at Mercer. The first spring practice, we had two days and then sent them home for COVID. Last spring, we played an eight-game season. Mm -hmm. So we finally got to have a true spring where we could focus on us and just fundamentals and doing what we do, have a real off-season in the weight room. Um, and so hopefully you just continue to see progress because we've come a long way. We put ourselves in position last fall to win a championship. We didn't get it done, so we've got to continue to grow. Um, but I, we have a, a the most important thing for me is culture. The way we do things every day, acting like a champion every day and everything you're doing, we have that foundation laid. Our kids understand that they're doing those things. So hopefully you'll just continue to see growth from our program. Um, whatever our best is, hopefully we can get it out of our our kids, that's all we ask them. I just want whatever the best the 22 football team can be, let's put that on the football field every Saturday. One of the players we've highlighted on our show a lot is one of the best DBs in the FCS is Lance Wise. Mm -hmm. He does a lot for you guys. Speak a little bit about his development and him stepping into that leadership role in the secondary. Lance has always had leadership characteristics. He's an outgoing kid. He's a very well-spoken kid, really smart. Uh, the, the other players gravitate towards him. Um, he had a great fall for us. He actually missed some of spring. He missed spring practice with a uh, – he had a, a labrum. That's all – he's all he's all past all that. So he had to lead in other ways. He did a really good job of just being on the field and talking to young guys and, and just being real supportive um, while continuing to rehab his shoulder. So uh, uh, I expect Lance to – you know, he's, he's, he's got a lot of football under his belt now. There's not a lot of things he hadn't seen. Um, he has a knack for making plays. Um, I expect him to have a big fall, I really do. Recruiting has changed so much as a head coach just over the past three, four seasons. Right. How do you and your staff balance recruiting out of the transfer portal but also not losing and establishing those relationships on the high school trail? Yeah, I, that's a great question. You know, you, you have to adapt. Um, if you go back and look at our signing class last year, and that was really our first true signing class because my first year we had a month to put it together. The second year, we had a three-game body of work from the fall, and we're not face-to-face -face with any kid because of the extended dead period. So this past signing class, uh, you know, was our was our first true year-round. You know, where we were able to go recruit kids. Um, the transfer board adds a variable. We were probably, I think, the number was around 80% high school signees and 20% out of the transfer board. The bottom line is, whatever kids you bring into your program, whether it's transfer portal or whether it's high school kid, they better fit your culture. Yeah. Okay, they need to fit. Is this guy gonna? Is there? Does he have baggage? Is there a reason he's in the transfer? Is it? You know, we ask the same questions. We do our homework. Is this guy a winner? Is he a champion? Is he gonna fit what we do? You know, you have to meet certain needs. Sometimes you need an older player. But we're primarily gonna err on the side of taking high school kids and, and be a developmental program. Um, I think a lot of colleges have gone to pretty much strictly transfer portal. That's okay. It, it may fit their, you know, their situation better. We're still going to the high school, you know, high school football in Georgia is pretty dang good. We're right in the middle of a, of a great high school football state, um, and I really want to bring kids in and develop them from day one, if, if possible. Like I said, you got to. You, sometimes you have a need. And listen, we brought in some transfers that I really like. You know, Trey Atkins, a receiver from from South Carolina. That kid's going to help us. He is a great. Kid. Austin Douglas, a running back from James Madison. Uh, 
uh, Israel McQuees is, a, is an offensive lineman um, from Alabama A&M. I'm going to leave somebody out if I'm, if I'm not. <laughs> Kyle Lloyd's a transfer uh, uh, from uh, Army Prep who's a, who's a safety. And then Fred Jackson's a, a kind of a utility guy uh, from Coastal Carolina. We did our homework. I talked to everybody about those kids. Are they going to be guys that, that fit our culture and are able to find a way to bring something to the table for us? And I'm really excited about the kids. Like I said, we don't do a lot of transfers, but I'm excited about the ones we have coming in. The final question, Coach. You guys have a lot of hype coming into the season. Three do polls, we? Okay. Three, three polls already <laughs> had you guys in the top no, we, 20. It, that's positive, yeah. yeah. Voted, voted top three in the conference, and this is big for Mercer. So for you, what has it been like? How did, what's the message like in the locker room to live up to those expectations? And what are the keys to go out there and win that conference championship? you got to understand that this is not the 21 football team. It's the 22 football team. And just because we got to a certain point last year and had a chance to win a championship doesn't mean that it automatically happens. you gotta, you got to start right at the bottom of the mountain again and get back to where you were and then find a way to get it done. So you got to earn the right to be good. And uh, – um, or you get beat. And in this league, when anybody can beat anybody, um, you better show up every day and week. And so all I'm asking from our guys is just keep believing in what we're doing and show up and play at the very highest level. You gotta let, you're guaranteed 11 chances. That ought not be hard to be ready 11 times. And uh, if you'll do that, that gives you the best chance to win a championship. Doesn't, doesn't guarantee anything, but it gives you the best chance. Coach, I appreciate your time, guys. Make sure to tune in to some Mercer football this year. Stay tuned for more content from SoCal Media Day.